he gets there. The alternative media, Jerry. That's where you hear the truth. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Now, when we recently interviewed Robert Phoenix, who I hope to talk to again soon, it would be much to the dismay of our YouTube audience, he talked about how essentially Trump is running his administration from New York, from his tower in New York, which is fascinating, and it's fun to watch all the cronies come groveling up to New York as they have to wait on the elevator and pissed off about all the photographers taking pictures. Oh, God, I can't put... Oh. So last week, a military airplane and two huge helicopters doing loops over Midtown were conducting an emergency relocation planning mission in case they need to extract President-elect Donald Trump during an emergency or an attack. The site of the C-130 search and rescue aircraft and two... HH-60 Pave Hawk helicopters making passes over the heart of the no-fly Manhattan for 40 minutes Tuesday, without warning or explanation, unnerved countless New Yorkers and tourists, many of whom took to Twitter and Facebook expressing post-9-11 concerns. 15 plus years later. Sources told on the inside, and we're grabbing this story from DNAinfo.com, which is based out of New York, They said that the flyovers were part of an emergency relocation drill designed to identify locations, primarily in Central Park, where a chopper could touch down near Trump's home inside Trump Tower on 56th and 5th and safely evacuate Trump and others from the city. It was the military doing their homework. They were making plans how to remove him, mapping plans and strategizing, another source said. In the event of an emergency... The president would be whisked by the Secret Service north to the park and then flown in a helicopter to the nation's capital or a secret government site in Virginia or, wait for it, West Virginia. Yeah, it's probably in Shepherdstown, my college town. Okay, sidebar. Everybody knows at some point the Washington Post magazine busted the Greenbrier Hotel for being the secret Cold War bunker in the heart of West Virginia. And the years had gone by, and the Cold War was essentially over, and it basically, if shit broke down, wasn't really going to be that good anyway. And actually, the Washington Post went to the Greenbrier Hotel and said, you guys, we're going to run this story. Here's your chance to get ahead, and we'll let you come out before we embarrass you. And they did. They announced it, the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia. It's basically around Lewisburg. Said, ah, you're right, we have been the secret Cold War underground bunker since the Kennedy era. You caught us. Now they turned it into a museum and you can come look around while you stay around at the hotel as well. Meanwhile, I'm in my college town, which is up in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia, right on the border of Maryland at the Potomac River. I could throw a rock into Maryland from one of my dorms. The first week of 2000, the year 2000, There were Israeli-Syrian peace talks in my college town, and I've talked about this before, and they did them because it's an hour away from D.C. you got a gigantic college campus with a bunch of facilities where you can host meetings and press conferences. It's actually how a friend and a colleague went to go work for the State Department because he was a great TD. Technical director. So basically, they do this gigantic world peace talks Right around the same time, West Virginia seemed to get these new facilities, this new fish and wildlife facility, the National Conservation Training Center, which years later I would realize had the same acronym as the National Counterterrorism Center. But the National Conservation Training Center is this huge, beautiful facility. All the hippies in my college town got respectable jobs working for fish and wildlife. Then they were telling me there's these weird underground areas. Then they're telling me, oh, there was this weird link-up today. Donald Rumsfeld. Some weird video transmission. I would bet a milkshake that the new West Virginia panic facility is in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, in my old college town, and it's going to be connected to the Clarion Inn, which is this weird crony out-of-the-blue hotel that just landed. Again, this is crazy conspiracy theory. 
The Clarion Hotel in Shepherdstown, West Virginia is connected physically and administratively to the Fish and Wildlife Center, the National Conservation Training Center, and that is connected to the underground military bases. I'll bet you one milkshake. So let's get back to Manhattan. The aircraft models spotted during the exercise can fly long distances without refueling and can also refuel in mid-air if necessary. If you recall from the Top Gun NES game, that shit is hard. According to sources, the NYPD was given only short notice about the flyovers and were never informed that the military would be using a plane as large as a C-130 with its 130-foot wingspan. They should have told people they were doing recon and going to fly at low altitudes instead of keeping it a secret, a law enforcement source said. People were scared, and rightly so. And it's not the first time. I've got classic old videos on my YouTube channel. Low-flying Air Force One freaks out Manhattan. And then later they go, uh, we just actually wanted to do some photos of Air Force One. So we thought we would fly it around midtown Manhattan. You know, just five or six years after 9-11. As is the way in a lot of situations anymore, we go to ABC News for some coverage of this, which they get from citizens. There's the military helicopter. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.